When I found myself standing in this gray mist with the realization that I had died, I remember feeling so overjoyed and so thrilled because I knew that even though I was what we call dead, I was still very much alive, very much alive. I was totally aware. And I began to pour out these feelings of thanksgiving. I wasn't doing it verbally, but it seemed that the very essence of me was saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you that you set it up this way, that I really am, I really am immortal. I was not annihilated. And I was involved in this tremendous pouring forth of gratitude and joy and as that was going on inside me, this white light started infiltrating my consciousness and it came into me. It seemed that I went out into it. I expanded into it as it came into my field of consciousness and there was nothing that I was aware of except this brilliant white light. And the light brought with it the most incredible feelings of total love, total safety, total protection. And I was just enveloped in this. I remember, I remember feeling almost cradled by it. It was, it was so dynamic, it was almost palpable. And as I existed in this white light and in this incredible love, I began to be rapturous. And the rapture built and the bliss built. And my, my, my consciousness of everything seemed to expand with the, with the bliss of it all. And suddenly there came into my field of consciousness an entire field of knowledge. It was like a block. It was like a whole block of knowledge that just simply came in and settled itself on me. And I knew what takes several sentences to tell. But it didn't come in in several sentences. It just came in all of a piece. And what I knew was that I was immortal, that I was eternal, that I was indestructible, that I always had been and that I always would be, and that there was no way in this world that I could ever be lost, that it was impossible for me to fall into a crack in the universe somewhere and never be heard from again. I just knew that I was utterly safe and that I always had been forever and ever and ever. And when that block of knowledge was digested by me, as it were, another block of knowledge came in, another whole field came into my being. And what I knew then was that the universe runs according to a perfect plan. I knew that the plan was perfect. And everything that we think about as hard to understand or unfair or uh, cruel, brutal, whatever, that that was all really without meaning. Um, and I know that's very difficult. But I knew this. I understood it. I comprehended it in a way that when I came back from the experience, I really couldn't comprehend anymore. But I understood that all of the things that we worry about and that concern us, we don't have to worry about at all. There is a perfect plan, and the plan is working itself out in its perfection. And then, I remember I simply became more blissful, more rapturous, 
more ecstatic. I just was filling and filling with this light and with this love that was in the light. You know, the dynamics of this light are not static at all. They are, they are so dynamic. There's just so much going on in there of love and joy and knowledge. And, you know, as you take it into yourself or, or really as it, as it goes into you and you receive it, um, your, your ecstasy level just becomes tremendous. And I know that I had lost all sense of having a body. It, it was just my consciousness, uh, sort of pure and free-floating, and I did not think at all during this part of the experience. I had no thoughts. I was like a receiving station. I merely felt and absorbed and took in and, and did not think at all. But I reached the point in, in the rapture of it all where I thought to myself, Suddenly, the first thought, I wonder how much more of this I can stand before I shatter. And with that thought, the light began to recede. So the universe will not let us shatter. We, we cannot take in more of this bliss and joy than we are able to handle at the time. And as the light began to recede, of course, the, the, the rapture that I had built up uh, also began to dissipate. So I thought, well, where, there should be a tunnel around here somewhere. And whoosh, <laughs> there it was. It kind of showed up back here. And before you see it, you feel it. And, and that's, that's the most beautiful part of a near-death experience because you feel the light, and it pulses, and it's alive, and it's, it's so hard to explain because we have nothing like it on the earth plane, and there really are no words. So whatever I tell you is just a, a very small uh, percentage of what it really felt like, but it really is unconditional love. It is the feeling seeping into your being. Now we still, we still kind of think that we're, we have a body even though we're out of our body. We know we're out of our body. We realize, oh, there's a, I'm having thoughts and I'm, my body's in there. So there's an I that isn't associated with that body necessarily. So I am bigger and more expansive than what I thought I was. The body is like a coat, and I can leave it, and I can go home. It feels like home. It feels like we have returned to what we are made of. It is bliss. It is joy. It is total acceptance mm -hmm. and, and no judgment whatsoever. It is being seen for everything you are, everything you've done, everything you've thought, and being accepted and understood and loved for that. Even all those things, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, even all those things that you really wish no one would ever figure out that you had that thought, it knows. And I met with beings of light who were sort of the, the personification of this love, who just embraced me and surrounded me in this total acceptance, this total love. And then the monitor flatlined. And I remember thinking, I'm really dead now, so I don't want to see this. How are they going to revive me? So. I left that room and the spirit form can simply go through a wall. So it's like your consciousness decides what you want to do. And I was like, I will leave this room now as they revive me. And I saw my stepdad getting a candy bar out of a vending machine. 
And I thought, and that's funny that he eats candy bars because he's always bragging about what a vegan he is and a health nut and, you know, all these things. And uh, later I asked my mom if she saw him get a candy bar. And she said that at that moment, her and my dad were on their knees praying and they were certain that I died in surgery. And then he came back in with this candy bar, offered them some of the candy and made a joke. And I was like, well, I was dead at that moment, mom. That's the moment that you felt I was dead and I truly was. But I had no fear. And then I flew into the night sky. And I remember like, we all wanna fly. If you've ever had a lucid dream, you wanna be a bird, you wanna fly above everything and you wanna see the world. And that's how I felt. I felt as if I was just floating in this beautiful night sky. And I began to feel this connection to everyone I had ever met. Sometimes near-death experiencers talk about a tunnel that they go down, but I was in the night sky. Then very quickly, I was just in the stars. And when I was in that place, I began to feel a deeper sense of peace because I felt this consciousness coming toward me that was like the light of God, perhaps. It was a light that was full of intelligence and peace and joy. These messages started coming toward me and the messages are very simple. One was love is all that matters. It's all that we take with us when we go. And my soul just flew towards this light. And as I got closer to that light, everything that had been painful in my childhood, the poverty, the neglect, the emotional abuse, all of that seemed to wash away. That wasn't your fault. You're loved, you're perfect, you're fine. You're a child of God, you are loved completely. Earlier in the near-death experience, I had heard, be like a little child. And at that moment, I felt like a little child. I felt like I was loved deeply by God. Nothing could harm me. I felt completely free. And I didn't want to leave that realm because you can't imagine that love. It's so intense and we don't feel anything like it here. We feel glimpses of it here. Loving a child, loving your parents, loving, you know, your spouse. It's all just a brief, it's, it's not the same. This is complete. And those are just pieces is the only way I can describe it. I floated out of my body and I looked down and I saw myself. And I was confused because I didn't recognize myself at, at first. And I was kind of afraid then. But as I started floating above my body, I noticed I was in a tunnel and I started going towards a light. And that light was the most brilliant light multiplied thousands of times stronger than what the sun was. And I was being pulled towards that. And I kept going and kept going and kept going. And the closer I got, the more intense the feeling of love that was possessing me. It, it was pushing in on me. It was, it was almost suffocating me. It was so tight. And when I got to the light, the love was so incredible, the acceptance, the forgiveness. There was pure knowledge. I knew everything and, and I knew everything was going to be okay. Uh, immediately I had a conscious thought of, man, you gotta be really bad not to, not to get to come here because I didn't feel like I'd been that good a person. And I was in heaven. I felt like I was in heaven. There was no sign there saying heaven, but I just, I felt the love, I felt the forgiveness, I felt the peace. I knew, I knew that was the place I was at. And in front of me, uh, probably at a distance of about 75 yards, there was a, a wall and it was made out of blue stained glass. And there was a, a bright, bright light behind it. And there was a hole in the stained glass uh, as if somebody had thrown a rock through it. It wasn't a perfectly round hole. It had edges to it and there were beams coming off the edges with this bright light shining through the, through the hole. 
and kind of kind of look like looking at a kaleidoscope because the 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 light kind of flickered and changed, and and I, and I knew I wanted to get to the light, but I couldn't go there uh, at my own speed. I was just being drawn to the light very slowly, and uh, and during this time there was no there was no verbal communication, but I felt the sense of I felt the sense of total love, total peace. Uh, I had no physical feeling of, of any body, no of, of having a body. I didn't I didn't feel like the sense of clothes touching my body. It was just like it was just like having my consciousness without having a body attached to it. It was just total relaxation uh, that that you don't ex experience here on Earth. And um, I felt this just just clean, being forgiven, and a, a, a cleaning of my soul. As I pulled towards pulled towards the light, I got closer. I recognized that the uh, uh, the delusion of the light being like a kaleidoscope was uh, the was figures or people walking back and forth in front of the, in front of the light. As I got closer to it, I tried to make out who they were. I never could because the Light was so bright behind them, all I could ever make out was silhouettes, but it was people that were walking back and forth in front of the light. I felt a presence. I sort of turned around to look at it, and that's when I saw the very tiny pinpoint of light. And the light started to pull me. And there was a physical sensation to the pulling, and I know how that must sound. Nonetheless, it's true. There was a physical sensation, rather like going over a hill real fast. Tell me. And I uh, went toward the light. The closer I got to the light, I began to discern different figures, different people, and I distinctly heard my grandmother call me. She has a very distinct voice. And I immediately went to her. And it felt great. And I saw an uncle who passed away when he was only 39 years old. He taught me a lot. He taught me to play my first guitar. And I saw many, many people I knew and many, many I didn't know. But I knew that I was somehow in some way connected to them. I asked if God was the light. And the answer was, no, God is not the light. The light is what happens when God breathes. And I distinctly remember thinking, I'm standing in the breath of God. I moved into what appeared to be a, a sea of light. It was as if Every atom or molecule in this room had been electrified with love, with creative and very powerful love. We think of love as being something not powerful, but this love, I realized, was the greatest force of all things. And it was as if every atom were an individual and were singing and was, was welcoming me and uh, was full of love. And yet I was more and more attracted to what I perceived to be the center of the sea of light. It was as if in the, in the center of this sea there was a sun. And my heart was just irresistibly attracted to that. And again, in an instant, with a tremendous clash, not clash, but in, in, in a tremendous and, and, and magnificent instant, I entered this, this center of the sea of light, this, this sun in, in, in the sea, the light, the heart of the light. And it was as if I were devastated. It was as if I were, you know, just spider silk in the solar wind. I was completely devastated by bliss and by rapture and by ecstasy. And yet I was not. I was simply in and of, and because of that light, 
And yet I was, as an individual, destroyed. It was as if I were the quintessential phoenix. And it seemed that I was in that non-place, that place of non-being as an individual for forever. <laughs> I was having a full out-of-body experience. Um, I was completely separated and I was going someplace else. And when I got out of the building, that's when things really started to get interesting. I was, I felt like I was, when I got out, I was suddenly immersed in this bluish white light. And in that white light was truly the most amazing feeling. If you could imagine absolute love and peace. And it was, it was a force that there was absolutely nothing else in it. And, and I felt like I was in a crystal clear stream and I could see the rays of light passing through it. And it had a sparkly appearance. But I, as I was thinking about this and looking at it, I could actually see the lines of the energy, which to me was amazing. And because I, you know, because of my science background, I thought this is something I could measure. It's that strong. And what I was able to see was that this energy made up everything that exists and flowed through it. And I thought that whatever God is, this is it. And I was absolutely taken by how great it felt. And I thought this is the best thing that could ever happen to somebody. And when I looked down at my body, I didn't have a body. It was only light. It was a light. And the beings that were in these layers of white light were the same. And it was like I had ears and I, like I had a head, like I had eyes. And, you know, my head was there, just, just my body was gone. They were the same. It was like we were talking to each other telepathically. We were talking with our minds. And as I passed through and continued ascending, I saw way at the top of this little funnel this beautiful, uh, magnificent ball of light. And it was like when in the past, in the old days, when the television program went out at midnight, there was all of this crackly energy like, only this was a ball of light and energy field that was like diamonds and jewels and it, it, it uh, pulsated, it swirled, it pulsated and it went from all the beautiful hues and colors that exist, almost colors that even don't exist in our earthly world. It, it was so bright and brilliant and yet I could look right straight into this light. And as I ascended continuously I felt buoyant and, and really quite relaxed. Finally the stresses were totally gone that we normally have. And in the last layer, it was like the last layer cradled this beautiful ball of light. And there were beings there that said, we know that you know where you're going. And I said, I know where I'm going. I'm not even sure what's happening here. And with that, I shot right to the center of this magnificent ball of light above me, just like a catapult. And there I was in the center of this beautiful, beautiful, magnificent light. And out of that light came this voice and says, you're safe. You're here with me. You're safe. And I'm looking around, you know, who is that? And the voice came back and said to me, I am the light. You're the light? You mean you're trying to tell me you're the, the transcendent? You're the one, the, the great kahuna? The, are you trying to tell me that you're God? And the voice came back again. Yes, I am the light. And you are safe. You are here with me. And then he... I just said he, the voice was a man's voice, but like no other voice that you've ever heard. And it uh, came down on me and just washed the woes of the world away. And 
then I suddenly realized, we thought, oh my goodness, I'm talking, I must be dead. It was a total immersion in light, brightness, warmth, peace, uh, security. Uh, it, I did not <clears throat> have an out-of-body experience. I did not see my body uh, or anyone about me. I just immediately went into this beautiful, bright light. Uh, it's difficult to describe. Matter of fact, it's impossible to, des to describe. Uh, verbally, it cannot be expressed. It it's something which becomes you and you become it. Uh, I could say that I was peace. I was love. Uh, I was the brightness. Uh, it was part of me. I had no recollection of anything, <coughs> excuse me, anything biological. It's not like you could see something because your sight is biological. It's necessary here. A hearing is necessary here. A speech is necessary here. It's not there. Uh, you just know. You're, you're all knowing. Uh, everything is a part of you. And it's just so, just so beautiful. Uh, I, it was, it was eternity. Uh, it's like I was always there and I will always be there. That my existence on earth was just a very brief instant. All I can say that this was being in the realm of God. It's a place of um, beyond male, female God, God, Goddess, all that is. It's like liquid love, it's light, it's divine peace, it's beauty. It's, there are simply no words to describe this heavenly place. And being enveloped in that light changed my whole life. And as you may have heard in other stories, when people are in that light, they don't want to come back. Because in that moment you have an awakening. In that moment you often remember who you are. You remember so many things and you have access to divine knowledge and you have access to all the mysteries of the universe. And in my case I saw that there's a divine plan for earth. There's a reason for being here. And on some level we are not victims at all. And God loves us eternally. There is no final judgment. And when you're in that light you see who you are completely, you see your flaws, you see your gifts, and you judge yourself because you, everything is reflected back to you. There's so much more I could say about that, but my main purpose in sharing this with you is to tell you that there is no reason to fear death. You cannot die. The body dies, you lay down the body, your spirit goes on, you simply cannot die. And so you have so much to look forward to, and it's important to know um, I believe of this consciousness because consciousness attracts consciousness. And that was um, as I recognized that um, I didn't recognize I was out of body. I just started experiencing that being in this void. Uh, and there was, I was just in a pure void. There wasn't any reference points in any time or space really. It, it was very, very disorienting. But I felt a presence of some sort around me. And uh, that presence slowly coalesced in front of me into light. And I didn't experience a tunnel. It, I just experienced this incredible, loving light. And uh, it was fascinating. I was just in awe of it because there wasn't anything outside of it. That light contained the universe. It contained all the phenomena and non-phenomena. Uh, there wasn't anything that wasn't that light. And the only way I could perceive it was for it to differentiate. There was nothing outside of it. It wasn't like space that we know because it holds objects together. There just was no thing, no time, no space, no, no nothing. And so it had to create an illusion of separation for me to experience it. And... Um, I, I just, you know, I, I just couldn't wrap my mind around that, but that's the best way I can describe it. And it started, I don't know if I was moving towards it or it just got brighter, but we came closer. And as I did so, these events would emerge in my life of uh, uh, things that I had been attached to or things that have, I felt are important to me. And, um, as, and I felt like I was attached to them by cords. 
And I noticed after this happened a few times that as they dissolved, the light got brighter and nearer and more loving and more encompassing. Um, and by the way, as an aside here, um, the symptoms I've been was having, I was on disability for several years with heart and, uh, and uh, brain damage after the 1997 event. Those symptoms are increasing. My neurologist explains it that uh, when I turn into an emotional puddle, and he says, well, the emotional system and the, the thought processing share the same part of the brain. So when it gets over, you turn into an emotional puddle. So my experience, frankly, is I feel as if the veil is lifting and it's just too bright to contain me. So don't take it personally. <laughs> um, This incredible light that uh, just kept getting brighter um, was still separated from me, and um, and these these events of and I couldn't remember afterwards what the events were, but I do remember one that I had really sacrificed for. It was really identifying who Jim is, and and it was something I think I really suffered for. As they say, suffering is one of the last things we'll give up. And I remember rearing up in the face of this light, going, I'm not going to give that one up. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I knew as I released these things, I was moving towards everything I could ever want. And yet I was still allowing an attachment to keep me separate. Somehow it dissolved anyway, unresolved. <laughs> Uh, something I get to deal with, I guess, in the future. Um, and this process continued uh, for some time until I got to the edge of the light. And I found, at this point, I had a sense of my body still. I, I had my consciousness, but a sense of being in a body uh, that I didn't have for a little while. Uh, but it became more apparent as I started merging with the light. And in that emergence, I noticed that my body started becoming the light and becoming the infinite. And that was pretty cool. I kept merging with it, merging with it. And uh, to the point, my consciousness also started merging with it. And I would move far enough into the light that I recognized that if I moved any further, Jim would disappear. That the, the act of a separate awareness would um, just totally disappear. Now, we can communicate here because we have the illusion of separation. And it requires that to create in the phenomenal world. What we've done, though, is identified ourselves as that separate being. So who we are and where everything is in the universe is that light, that presence. And so I played on this boundary for what seemed like an hour, merging with it, drawing back, merging with it, and I would get as far as I could, and uh, with this concern that if I did dissolve into it, I would not come out of it. That I would just become the light. And I looked at all the stars and I, I saw one fairly faint but medium-sized star, and I thought, that's where I need to go. I just instinctively knew. You ask a question, and you, boom, you're there. It, it was instantaneous. And as I was entering the, what I call the tunnel of light, people were greeting me. And some of the people were still alive on Earth, but they were there greeting me, and along with people who had passed to the other side. They were welcoming me, there was music playing, and I, I didn't care, I just had this drive to get to the light, the source, the power, uh, which was totally blinding light, yet I could look at it. It was almost an oxymoron. <laughs> and uh, I got to the light, and I said, why was my life so difficult? And the essence, the light, God, whatever you want to call it, the source, said, don't you remember, you chose this. And he brought in some guides that individually took me to a table and said, remember when you chose this? You also chose these things and we told you not to because it was too much to handle. So 
but you insisted you wanted to do it and then they sent in more guides who went through the same process because I kept choosing a lot of things apparently I wanted to do it all in one lifetime and um, and then I recall the choices I made pre-birth which sort of solidified and said that was okay so I went back to the light and the light says now it's time to judge your life and I did a life review which to me appeared as a film strip with the leader holes to it in each frame was a different instance of something that happened in my life and I came to one that I was very regretful over and um, a boy used to torment me and I finally reacted one day and I hurt him and I regretted that um, and I told the light that that's what I regretted and the light told me well you know you've achieved what you went there to do and you may stay here in the light but we have another thing we want to offer you and they opened what I call door number two and they opened it a crack and they said, or you can go back and achieve what's behind door number two. And I questioned him, I, the source, and I said, would that mean the doctor's gonna remain a doctor? He won't quit his profession? And the source said, yes, he will remain a doctor if you go back. And I said, I was giddy with joy, and I said, then I'm going back. I want him to remain a doctor. That's my gift to him. And I was popped right back into my body instantly. And um, in the fast moving current, the distance to shore was something like 200 yards at least to shore. And I went down several times in the process of going to shore. Like just out of sheer exhaustion, my body would go under and I would, my lungs would fill with lake water. But at that sort of desperate moment, somehow all your adrenaline kicks up or something and you manage to kick yourself up and get your head above water and then I continued struggling to try to swim to shore. So somewhere in the process of swimming to shore is when my near-death experience deepened. And what happened was all of a sudden I heard a whooshing noise. It was like whoosh. And all of a sudden my point of perception was no longer in my body. I mean, I was still swimming, I was still alive, I was still trying to swim ashore, but where I was looking from was that I was above my body and I was looking down. It looked, seemed like I was 20 or 30 feet above my body looking down. And then it, it's sort of, the best I can compare it is sort of like a split screen TV where you have a little tiny picture in one corner and a big picture. So the little tiny picture was that little bit of me that was still in the body trying to swim to shore, but most of my consciousness was out of my body and looking down at what was happening below. And then I went higher and I went into the light. <laughs> and the light was pure, unconditional, infinite love. It was the most profound and the most beautiful love that I had ever experienced in my life. And when I was in that light and I was permeated with that love, I, I just somehow knew a lot of things, not that it was spoken or told to me, but I just knew, I knew that I was experiencing a glimpse, a taste, an embrace of the higher power, what I had been raised to call God. And it was not an old man sitting on, with a long beard sitting on a throne judging us, but it was more like it's this infinite force underlying the universe, sustaining the universe, and loving every molecule, every atom, every soul, just as much as I was feeling the love at that minute. I was being shown around a town square in an environment I would call very heavenly. Basically, it appeared as though we're walking on a cloud, which is why I think it's really interesting that whenever people paint pictures or they talk about heaven, they talk about walking on a cloud or it's in the clouds. However, it was not a cloud. I'm going to explain. And I, I think this is really interesting because when I was there, 
there's a white light that fills the air. It, it, it's, it's almost like it has a texture to it because there's like a thickness, like a cloud. When you see something go deeper into a cloud, it begins to become harder to see. Well, in this environment, the light doesn't have a source. It's, there's not a sun in the sky. There's not lamps on the street. There's just light everywhere. And it comes, it seems to be coming from every direction or just hanging out in the air in a weird way. And when I was talking to these gentlemen, I couldn't even see their feet because the, the light was so bright. It was, you would just be blinded to their feet. And so I could imagine that if I tried to paint that, it would look like we were walking on a cloud. But we weren't walking on a cloud. There was a solid ground. The light, it started, the clouds started moving and the light started moving towards where I was. Uh, and very so pretty soon the light was shining on top of me, like um, rays were falling on me. This light was, that was the best experience I had ever had in my life. Uh, light was of golden white color. It was more like, uh, I used to work in metallurgy at one time and uh, it was more like when the molten gold is, uh, it emits a kind of a light. It's a yellowish white light and th it was that kind of a light but th it wasn't like a hot or a heat coming out of the light. It was very soothing, very calm. Uh, when the light was falling on me, at that time, th the wonderful thing happened to me was my brain or my mind, it stopped uh, wandering altogether. It was calm, I was calm, peaceful, and there were no thoughts at all in my mind. Uh, no, no good thoughts, no bad thoughts, no nothing. I was just calm and at peace with myself. Uh, the kind of pads I had, I could not release my hands from the handlebars and went right onto the top of my head with my helmet and felt a snap in my neck and knew I broke it and knew, next thing I knew it was dark, but not dark like someone turns the lights out, dark like everything's empty. And the next thing I know, I am in a, surrounded in a white light with some blues, you know, golden white light with some hints of blue in it, which is beautiful. And I felt completely at ease. In fact, I've never felt so at ease in my life. I'm a regular meditator, decades, closing on 40 years of meditation. I have many mystical experiences, but nothing like this. I was so happy. That at the highest level, the consciousness is totally formless. And then I found myself in front of a light. The light was like about a thousand suns blazing at the same time, but it was not hurting the eyes. It was, I felt unconditional love, like I talk about, I could see love, I could hear love, I could touch love, I could taste love, and I could smell love. It was love all around. It's very hard to describe it. But the best word I have come to describe it, the word I felt was a Sanskrit word, Shanti, which means cosmic peace, cosmic harmony, and bliss. And when I was in the presence of a light being, the light being talked to me without talking that my life will be spared, but when I go back, it will be a totally different life. And I had never heard of a near-death experience. There were very, at the time, it's 20 years ago, at the time there were very little, very few books about it. And people just didn't talk about it. And also the technology in the medical field wasn't as such as we can bring all these people back who have crossed over like they can today, especially with cardiac people. At that point, I just kept floating and, and I saw this big tunnel. I had a very atypical experience big tunnel with a light at the end of the tunnel and so I just floated toward through the tunnel I entered the tunnel and I floated toward this light this amazing beautiful peaceful loving 
all-encompassing and unconditional light. I, you really can't express it in human words because it completely limits the experience and there are no human words to express it. I say it's more of an emotion than it is uh, a, a word. And I started to go towards the light and I describe it as when I burst into the light and I was all encompassed into the light, it's sort of like when you're being born. Um, as an infant you come out and all of a sudden you're inundated with lights and sound and cold and wet and it's just you're just inundated. All your senses are just overwhelmed. That's the way I felt all the way down into the core of who I am was this amazing love and peace. I wanted this light. I didn't know what it was. I wanted it. I felt it. I needed it. And I knew, I kept thinking, oh, I'm home. I'm home. That's all I kept thinking. Oh my God. I'm blind. I can't see. You know, my worst nightmare. I'm in the dark. And I'm thinking, if I can just see one speck of light, one little flicker of light, I know I'm going to be okay. Because that was always my reference as a kid. If there could be just a little bit of outside light coming in the room, I would be okay. It wouldn't be pitch black. So I'm staring ahead and I see this little tiny, tiny, tiny glimmer of light. And I'm now fixated on it because it's the thing that's going to make this all okay, is if I have that to hold on to, that little bit of light. Because I don't know where I'm going and what I'm doing. If it happened to me today, I would have had it handled. I would have known. You're going in the tunnel. You know, we've read so much about it and heard so much about it. But I had no reference point. I didn't know what was occurring. I didn't know that I was dying or dead all I knew is that I was in this place and I didn't know what to do about it. So I'm fixated on this glimmer of light and as I'm staring at it and all of my attention is going there, it starts to grow. And as it's starting to grow, I know that whatever this is, it's okay. I'm going to be fine. And so I sort of just let the shoulders down, let the thoughts down, just had this sense of all rightness about it. And as I'm still being shoved, there's something now from this light pulling me, kind of coaching me and pulling me towards it. And as I'm getting closer, the light is getting brighter and bigger. And I'm just, it was almost like in slow motion, I'm just sort of moving, gliding towards this light towards this experience. And before I realized it, I'm now in the midst of it. It is everywhere. It's everything I can see and experience. It's everywhere. And I've said it and I've heard other NDEers say it, the white light. It's not white. It's a color we don't have a name for. It's a color we don't have a reference for. It's a color that has more feeling to it than experiencing color. It has a luminescence to it that we don't have in third dimensional reality. There's nothing like it that we can see here in life. And it's, it's brilliant. And the brilliance... You know, you think of brilliant light and it kind of makes you feel like that might be too much, that I need to put on dark glasses. As brilliant as this is, your eyes are fine with it. You don't have any response to it where, you know, you, you want to shield yourself because it's so brilliant. But it's so gentle. And I guess that's the dichotomy, you know. It's so huge and magnificent and wondrous and yet it's so gentle and so loving and that's the feeling you know you're just walking into stepping into this sense of unconditional love and here I am absolutely enraptured I felt feelings that I had never felt even as a as a child as a newborn with my mother I felt cherished 
in a deeper way than I, I knew you could experience. I felt like everything was right and all right and that nothing mattered except being in the present of this experience and in this feeling. And all of this information that came in this moment of being there, when you cross over, you're privy to all of the universal information. You might not retain it when you come back, but you are there in it in that moment. You are connected to all there is and all that is. And I was so grateful to be there.